Gentlemen, this is a Saw Good Man, the better. Better Call Saw podcast. My name is Brian, and with me, as always, is child porn star Dave. Dave, how's it going this evening? Show me on the doll where he touched you. <laughs> child porn star, really. <laughs> <laughs> Dave and I also host the Nothing Important Podcast. You can find that at www.nothingimportantpodcast.com, where Dave and I talk to people more famous, better looking, skinnier, and dare I say, debonair, than we will ever be. <laughs> Dave, I'm glad uh, I'm glad to hang out with you this evening. We haven't talked in a few days, so it's always good to get you on the horn. This is and, true. Uh, yeah, we have a great guest coming up. Uh, Louis Mancata is going to join us. And for those of you who don't recognize the name, you definitely recognize the character because Louis is one of the two silent assassins from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. As I call them, the murder twins. The murder twins. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it's going to be a fun interview. I can't wait to talk to him. Uh, I don't really know where the conversation will go because all day before he's calling, I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, man, we're... Uh, How's it going to sound? I wonder if he's going to be really like, <laughs> like, like a lot like his character. You know what I mean? But like, uh, he's going to so sit I there guess... silently and stare bullets into us <laughs> <laughs> through the phone, through the phone. But, yeah. but that is coming up later in just a few minutes. But before that, Dave, you've been working on a project. That's right. So in an effort to maybe raise a little bit of funding for this not for profit podcast that we do in our spare time and don't make any money off of. And considering some of our fans have wrote us requesting copies of the theme song or telling how much they like the theme song, we are now selling the theme song on iTunes as of August 5th. And uh, well, because I mean, we have some more things in the works, we have some actually some really kind of big, cool ideas that we're going to try and do to really take it to the next, next level next season. And uh, mm -hmm. this is one step in that process. I don't want to divulge too much. I want a lot of it to be a surprise, but it's going to be pretty kick-ass. Awesome. Awesome. So that's, uh, as of August 5th. So easily by the time, well, it's probably by the time this goes up, it's probably already past August 5th. More than likely so, it's um, available now. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Wonderful. Okay. So, uh, make sure to, uh, to check out, uh, com. We will definitely have, uh, a link to where you can purchase, uh, this song, maybe a short preview of it. Um, but Dave, it's kind of exciting that you're you're taking something uh, you're taking something from something we we've created, and with the help of some of your musician buddies, uh, you you have something that you can kind of put out to the masses. Yeah, that's the goal. It's like you're, um, it's like you're re releasing a single, guy. Yeah, pretty much. It's kind of our first single. I mean, uh, my friend Tom, who you've heard on, as a, he was a third mic once, and you know we're trying to do this make it a thing we like doing soundtracks and theme songs we've mentioned before we've already booked a couple other gigs and why not do it on the podcast too? show people what we can do you know what i'm saying that's awesome that's Cause, awesome cause anyway that pays uh, attention knows that interviewing is not going to be a viable career choice <laughs> absolutely so make sure please check out uh the it's all good man theme song make sure it's a uh, 99 cents uh, support Dave and his awesome musicianship. Uh, it's all good man theme song on iTunes. And now, here's our chat with Louis Mancata. It's all good man. It's all good man. Dave, are you there? I am here. All right, look at that. I'm. We're so much better at this day. We have Luis Mancata on from uh, Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. Hello, guys. Hello. How are you? <laughs> we're we're doing great. We're doing great. You know, I got to tell you, uh, how close was I to to pronouncing your name? Because Dave and I, I've 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 worked on it, and for some reason, I feel like I just can't pronounce it correctly. It's Luis Moncada, right? Luis Moncada. Yeah. Depending Moncada. on who it is, my mama calls me Luis. Everybody else calls me Luis. 
but All right. Moncada it is, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, first off, thanks for coming on our podcast. I know our listeners will totally uh, enjoy it. And I, I got to say, uh, congratulations on two great series now, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Thank you. That is a beautiful thing. You know what the cool thing is about Saul that I like more? What's that? We don't die. <laughs> <laughs> we can't die. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Right, yeah, right. job security, right? You're you're rope, you're you're locked in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny because you're not the first guest we have had on with the same sentiment. <laughs> Everyone seems to appreciate the fact they were written back into every, the show. Everywhere you guys get on, except for you know, I'm saying the new kid like uh, Michael Mando, maybe perhaps you know we don't know what happens to him. He doesn't make it all the way to Breaking Bad, so we're like, right. you know, what happens to him? You know. Mm-hmm. So he'll be one, but probably everybody else. Yeah, everyone from Breaking Bad is cool. <laughs> it's safe. Yeah, we we had Michael on, and we tried to uh, get that out of him, but he says he doesn't even know what happens to him yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> so did I? Did I see that on Twitter? Were you were you training uh, kickboxing with him? Uh, we did that yesterday. Yes. Awesome. Is is that something you've done for a while, or is that just something you're just starting to get into? No, I, I've done it for a while. I actually competed in Muay Thai, and 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 I stopped Muay competing Thai. in 2009 because of work. And mm-hmm. uh, in 2007, my son was born, my baby, and I kind of kept going with competition. But but it's really hard when you when you have a a baby, you train Muay Thai and boxing twice a day, and then the acting, audition, jobs, you know. And I remember once. In that period, no, two times. I, I, in the period of time, I trained, trained, trained for like a month, a month and a half, two months. Zoom, fight day was a uh, Friday, and that same week, I had an audition for a show, and I booked the show, and it started working on Friday. So all the training I did, the whole time I trained, went to. Can I see shit? Yes. Yeah. yeah absolutely. This is okay. So the whole training went to shit. Okay. So hey, I, I was pissed. <laughs> You know how it is. Like you're like, I was pissed that I, I I didn't get to fight, but I was happy I got a job and I worked a job. You know, Muay Thai does not give money. It, it, right, it, right. It's it's really seriously the money is nothing. So you know, work is work, and I booked a job and I had to choose, and I was like, hey, you know, I gotta feed my baby, so <laughs> I took the job. But yeah, that hurt me, man. I was like, man, this sucks. And then it happened one more time that same year, and that's when I said, you know what? it is time for me to stop doing this shit and just do it for fun. You know, <laughs> so after that, I, I, start, I stopped competing and I started more training. I would go to the gym, guys that are getting ready to fight, I would go spar, go train, go help, you know, just, just stay around it, you know? So that is one passion I have. I love doing that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, that's- absolutely. That, that's, that's one thing I miss. I, uh, I wrestled most of my life and up until uh, when my daughter was born, uh, going on five years ago now, her birthday is actually at the end of this week. I uh, I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and my job afforded my my real life employment afforded me the ability to travel all over. And you know, like I I went to uh, New York and competed in the Pan Ams and all that good stuff. And then, wow! Yeah, one day one day I just uh, you know like uh, life just kind of got a hold of me, and uh, and now I'm fatter than I've ever been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but it, it's crazy. Trust me. You know what? The, the one thing I mean. You miss it. I miss it a lot. Like a, a lot of times, you know, if I'm home, I live with my baby and my baby and myself by ourselves. It's just me and him, you know. So I like mm-hmm. I have to cook for him a lot of times. You know, I find myself in the kitchen doing something, cooking some food for him, and I start shadow boxing in the kitchen. With him. <laughs> <laughs> just messing around, you know. You yeah. just gotta start messing around, thinking, yeah. <laughs> it is funny. My right. baby just looks at me like I'm funny, like I'm weird, you know. But, but yeah, yeah it's it, man. It, it never leaves you, and it's it's funny because just out of the blue, I think, I think I think my daughter was talking to to my father or something. But just out of the blue, one day she came up to me and she's like, "Dad, will you teach me how to wrestle?" And I'm like, "Oh, yes, You're like game on, yeah." <laughs> oh, awesome! That is that's yeah. great. My baby's the same, you know. With my, oh, I have all my equipment here for training people and for my fighting stuff and everything. I have everything, and I have 
I have gloves that my partners at the gym made for my baby that they're like baby you know, not baby, he's already nine, but I still call him baby. You guys know how that is. <laughs> he's gonna be twenty one and I'm still gonna he's gonna be my baby. Right. But yeah, so he has his own gloves, he has his own Muay Thai shorts and he's like, Daddy, I wanna learn how to fight. Oh man, it was music to my ears when he told me <laughs> I was like, Yes. Nope. So you know, I I've taught him a little bit and I was Put the never, ever, ever, ever try this at school, never with your friends, mm-hmm. never with. So he's never, he's never had an incident, never had a problem. Nice. He is the sweetest, most kind baby in the world. <laughs> 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 that's, that's the way it should be. You know, you got to, you got to raise them to be tough. Uh, it, your brother, uh, Daniel, he's, he's on the shows with you as well. Uh, is he into the, is he into the Muay Thai and all that as well? Yeah, he is. He actually is. Right now, he's, he's doing a lot more boxing. Danny started mm-hmm. later. But Danny's more boxing than Muay Thai. He goes, the, man, that, that dude goes to the gym probably, I would say, three times a week to go train, <laughs> you know, because the gym is very close to his house. I move it a little bit farther, so it's a little bit farther for me, mm-hmm. you know. But, yeah, he, he trains a lot. He trains a lot of boxing, and he's into the fighting stuff. And, yeah, so he does, too. He That's was there last time. He was there last time we trained with Michael. Uh, what was it? Last month, we we posted another picture, and yeah, he, Danny was there. <laughs> Let him know we're we're gonna hit him up to be on the show as well in the in the summer between the seasons. We, uh, you know, every every so many weeks we try to get somebody you know from the show. That way we could just kind of produce shows between the seasons. So you know, so we have something to do. So let him know. I'll be like, I'm going to be annoying him on Twitter too. <laughs> hit that little fucker up. If he doesn't answer, hit me up and I'll hit the motherfucker up. Did the motherfucker get on that shit? <laughs> <laughs> I'll put him on chicks for you guys. <laughs> now you, when you guys originally auditioned for Breaking Bad, and I, I, I know you probably told this, uh, you know, uh, or been asked this a million times, but you had actually acted before, but Daniel hadn't. He hadn't. I did. I had already been acting for about seven years prior. And, and when the casting call came, it said uh, that they needed twins or two guys that really, really looked alike. So <laughs> when I read the fucking thing, I was like, mm, I'm fucked. You know, I know <laughs> my brother was not acting. He didn't have not one credit. So I was like, oh, I didn't even think of bringing him because I couldn't. Um, so when I thought of other guy, I thought of a guy that looks like me, Lobo, he looks like me. And I was thinking, but I could, I couldn't do anything about it. I said, I'm going to just go myself, do my audition. And hopefully there's a motherfucker that looks like me and we'll both get cast. <laughs> so I went, did my piece. Yeah, no, really. I did my piece. I had two scenes, so I did them. And, and, and right after that, um, the casting ladies, uh, Sharon and Sherry, I've worked with them before on, that, on, on a couple other shows, actually. You know, so after my two scenes I did, they asked me, hey, Louis, so what's new? How's the family? And all that, you know, all that stuff. And he said, hey, any new tattoos, right? You have a few tattoos. And, he said, any new? and I said, yes, yeah, matter of fact, my brother just did a piece on my leg. And it was a Muay Thai tattoo, right? Oh, no, uh, mm. the Santa Muerte, one of those two. Fuck it. And, <laughs> and when I said my brother, my producer said, oh, you have a brother? And I said, yes. Ooh, does he look like you? I was like, He's not that good looking, but he looks a little like me, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so, and they were like, oh, really? It, 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 I mean, and, and they started asking stuff on my brother, and I was like, yes, he looks like me, da 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 And then, any acting experience? Nothing. Not one credit. And they were like, you can see, they didn't say anything, but they were like, you see the, the face goes to, oh, shit, you know? <laughs> and, and, but, but they were like, you know, for a minute, they thought about it, and they were like, all right, you know what? Here and they, they had me two, two scenes and said, Here, take it. Have your brother come in tomorrow, help him prepare. Uh, have these two scenes ready and uh, do an improv in Spanish. So, you know, boom, I fucking left, call my brother, call that motherfucker to like, get your ass. And with my brother, we're not like loving brothers. Trust me, we'll do anything for each other and we love each other and everything, but we don't show the, oh, I love you, know that bullshit. Right, right. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Hey, motherfucker, get your ass to the house right now. He was like, what, 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 what the fuck? I said, motherfucker, you have an addition more for this show. Get your ass to the house right, right now. Drop whatever you're talking to. Barack Obama, drop it. Come to the fucking house right now. <laughs> and he, and he, I don't know, man. He probably thought he was in trouble because I was, I was kind of like, you know, like that. Get him to the fucking house. He got to the house, gave him the fucking shit. 
I say, get in the room, study this shit. You have an audition tomorrow for this show, and it's an awesome show. So he goes in, in my I had a, in my house, I was in the spare room I had for like two hours. Study comes back out and tells me, I th- listen, he said, I think I'm ready. I was like, motherfucker, get back in. You don't think you're ready. <laughs> be ready. You don't, oh, half fast, I'm ready. Not, not that bullshit. You have to be ready. So, so he goes back in, comes back out, and I see, I, I really think I got it now, but I said, do you? And, and we did it again, and, and we did the same thing. He, he was not there yet. So I made some coffee, gave him some fucking coffee, put him in the fucking room again. <laughs> that is some more, and I had him like that for hours, okay? Poor guy, he probably fucking hated me. <laughs> the thing is that, you know, the next day we went, he went in, did his two scenes. I went in, we did an improv in Spanish. Two days later, they yeah. called us and we got the job. And after that, two weeks after that, we were in New Mexico shooting. Wow. So yeah, that motherfucker got lucky. But you know what I always <laughs> say? I always tell that motherfucker, he should pay me 10%. From now on, because then after that, he started doing more acting. I said, this motherfucker, he should pay me 10%. The yeah. Industry, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But but no. <laughs> nah, but he, he's cool, man. He enjoyed, it, it was a good experience, you know, to work um, for, for him, for me and him to, to, to work on that show, you know, because we, we didn't have a lot of dialogue. We have very minimal dialogue. Right. And it was really, really cool for him being the first time on set because he was nervous. When we first got to the set, he he was really nervous. Huh. I can tell. Danny Danny talks a lot. That motherfucker is a he is a social whore. He, that motherfucker talks to everybody. <laughs> and he talks and talks. And he's a funny guy. But when we got, you know, you can. He was tense. He was a little nervous. A little too. I, you know, just I was. I already knew he was nervous. He was peeing on <laughs> his pants, probably. You know. So you know. I, you know the. And I said this before many times, but this is just funny, okay? The first time that we stepped foot on set, Brian Cranston is directing the, the episode, right? And, and we get off the van, boom, to the set. Everybody's greeting. Hey, how you doing? We're going to do this. Blah, blah, blah. And Danny sees Brian, you know, like 20 feet away. And the first thing he tells me with his elbow, he's like, hey, hey, hey that's the guy from Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> <laughs> Funny and shit. It was so funny, you know. And yeah, just went on, did the thing, you know. It, it was good, man. It was good. He'll tell you when, when you guys interview Danny. He's gonna tell you how annoying I was every <laughs> single time. There was a fucking cut. I tell him, I, I would tell him shit like, "Motherfucker, you got." And I, and I talk like this, the motherfucker. You have to get in fucking character. You have to think that you're gonna go and kill that motherfucker mm-hmm. right now. You're gonna eat him for fucking breakfast, okay? And I'm like intense like that, right? And he's like, yes, yes. And I'm in his fucking ear. All right, motherfucker, this is it right here. You're going to go fucking eat him right now. And this is your fucking breakfast. And then you're going to go fucking have some coffee. And all right, we're good. You're going to go kill him. And it was so funny. But I'm telling you, he hated me. He's going to tell you, no, that motherfucker is annoying. He annoyed me. But he helped him. He helped him because... Hey, he got in character and he did a great job, I think, you know? Yeah, it all For being out. his first time acting, first, yeah. first time ever behind the camera, I mean, in front of the camera, I, I, he did great. Dude, that, that's, that is such an awesome and such a, a great story, you know? And, 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 and look how it panned out. Not only do you guys uh, play, like, iconic characters, but, like, I, I guess I'm saying like characters that really stick with you and they are probably some of the, the two twins or cousins or whatever they're supposed to be, you know, are some of the most intimidating characters Intense. on TV. And, and now you've been such an integral part of two major series. That's, that's a great success story, my friend. It, it, it is, man. You know why I was, I, I'm so thankful for that because, you know, we, we had a, you know, our run on the show was short. If you put mm-hmm. it on episodes, but the characters were so memorable. Oh, yeah. You know, they're so yeah. memorable. You know, it, it is so awesome. You know, it, 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 it's a beautiful thing. Man. And, and it also opened doors for other, you know, other things. It opened doors for us, you know. It, it's just right. awesome. It, it, it was great. Right. I, I was going to ask you, what, what do you have coming up? What do you have coming down the pike? Uh, How, right now, too. Matter of fact, tomorrow I have to work on a, show, a new show called uh, what's it, uh, Lethal Weapon. It's a new TV show. On Fox, right? Um, yes, so, it is. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> we worked on a, what did we do? A couple of 
two or three weeks ago, we worked on a film. I don't know if they're going to kick my ass if I say it, but it's a movie called Bright. Mm -hmm. uh, David Ayer movie, or Ayer, I forget how you say his last name, but yeah. And yeah, that's what's going on, and uh, yeah, waiting for them to call and be like, hey, we're going to start shooting uh, Better Call Saul soon. <laughs> crossing <laughs> fingers, crossing fingers. Uh. Now, I got I got to ask, as, as uh, um as uh, you kind of develop your career more, you said that your brother uh, uh, Daniel doesn't act as much. So when you go, go to auditions, do people try to get, like, do people try to cast type you as a part of the duo? Or is he off doing his own thing and then you're just kind of uh, branching off uh, to further your career? Did you ask me first if I get the typecasting for, for me? What was the question in the beginning? I, I'm sorry, my microphone might have cut out. I, I was asking, when you go to an audition, do people try to get Daniel to come with you as well, since you guys are so well-known from Breaking Bad? No, no, not, not really. No, like We have separate, we have two different agents now. He has his own agent, mm -hmm. I have my agent, but I, I, a lot of times we do get calls for, for brothers or for two of whatever they need because of Breaking Bad or Saul. Yeah. We, we do get call for that together. You know, they call, hey, stage in my angel, we'll go together to the piece. We have got gotten those calls. But a lot of other stuff, and I would say probably like 90% of the stuff, we go separate, you know. We've mm -hmm. even competed against each other, you know. Like, I give oh. you a look like, hey, fuck you. You better not get this, that motherfucker, because I really want it. <laughs> 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 I was telling something funny right before he goes into the fucking audition. He'll fuck him up, throw him up. Now he's like... <laughs> Nah, we don't There's do that. We love, do. We man. do. We. <laughs> nah, we don't. Nah, we help each other. Trust me. If he goes in first, he'll tell me whatever. Hey, there's six people in the fucking room. They're gonna have you do this shit, you know. And if I if I go first, I'll tell them the same shit, you know. Hey, it's better that it stays in the family. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, uh, Louise, thank you so much for coming on. It's all good, man. Uh, it's been an awesome conversation. I totally appreciate it. And, uh, you know, good luck in season three. I, and, uh, after season three, I hope you come back on our show and chat with us some more. Let Daniel know that I'm, I'm going to hit him up on Twitter and he better come on and feel free to, uh, spread it around the set too, that we're, we're coming after all those guys as well. A lot of them. You, have already you guys, brother, us, and, and, and always, you know, just throw my name in there. You know, if one of the guys on that and Lewis was on here, you can ask him and now I'll, I'll put in this good word for you too. You know, I'll, I'll get my brother to answer and uh, get him to get on the show. And, uh, yeah. Hey, awesome. but it was a pleasure, man, talking to you guys. And, uh, yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Liz. You have a wonderful night, all right? You too, guys. Thanks. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's all good, man. It's all good, man. Well, maybe that was Luis Mancata. And uh, what what a fun, fun dude. Yeah. Oh, we forgot the last question. <laughs> uh, the frozen pizza one? Yeah. But th that's okay. That, that was great. You know what? I, I – uh, um, it, you know, it's funny cause I think I've touched on this before. It's like, we should know better by now. Um, you know, like character actors are, are just actors. So they're, they're completely different uh -huh. off. You know, I think the closest thing that I said most recently is like when we talked to John Bailey, the honest trailer guys, remember I was like, man, I was in there thinking all day. I'm like, I wonder what he sounds like when he's not doing his, right. his voices and, and Louis, they portray the twins so well. And he has such a presence on screen and he seems so intimidating. It's like, I, I always thought he'd be super friendly, but like, he just seems like, like I would go have a beer with him. <laughs> yeah. Well, he seems super friendly, but he definitely, he has that air of intensity which is probably why he got the gig in the first place yeah yeah Abs you know with the fighting yeah. and the training and the competitiveness and mm -hmm. yeah but that was it, it, uh, that was soon as it's funny because we were talking before the phone call was made about you know what we're we gonna talk about and then as soon as he said Muay Thai I was like oh him and Brian are gonna talk for a while I'm cool <laughs> <laughs> Well, he was such a great guy, and I, I love, uh, it, again, just keeping in line with everybody on Better Call Saul really seems to have, like, these really great stories about how, yeah. how they were cast, and, and uh, that that's awesome. One, not only that he pulls his uh, brother along, but two, I guess that he was given the opportunity to pull his brother along, mm -hmm. and that his brother actually went for it. Right, <laughs> you know, because a lot of people would be like, "Dude, shut!" Like, especially if they had never acted before, would be like, "Dude, shut the fuck up! I'm not gonna go do that." But, yeah, right. But no, it's, I mean, you know, he he talked about you know they like they're brothers. They kind of pick on each other a bit, but uh, but uh, you know, I I got from our discussion with him, you know, they're they're definitely a team though. Yeah, yeah. 
Absolutely awesome. So great times. Good times, good times, good yeah, times. Yeah, that was a really fun chat. That was a that was a really fun chat. <laughs> that was a really <laughs> that was a really fun chat. So uh those of you listening on it saw good man, uh we will be having more of the cast and crew of Better Call Saw coming up as the summer progresses. And I mean shit, we only have like what, eight months before February 2017 when they'll probably yeah, right? start the next season of Better Call Saul. <laughs> so we we got some time to kill. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to have some people back that we've had on before. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm really trying to, like, round the horn a little bit, try to get some of the big, big guys, and maybe I can get some of these guys to pressure the big, big dogs, you know, or I guess the big five, I guess, you know, the three, and then Peter and uh, Vince. Right. But, um, but, yeah, man. Uh, Man, it's been a great couple of weeks for uh, Better Call Saul and Cherkis, uh, Louis Mancada, um, Mancada. See, I mispronounced it again. Louis Mancada. Uh, it's just been a great couple of weeks, and I really hope those of you out there are enjoying it because Dave and I are having a great time putting them together for you. And as we mentioned before, new theme song available on iTunes for a dollar as of August 5th. That's right. So go check it out on iTunes. Make sure to pay the 99 cents. Definitely download the uh, theme song, and uh, it's it's uh, good times, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> call us, idiots. Call us, geniuses, whatever. Just call us. <laughs> <laughs>